Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a review of the Nikon 105 2.8 macro for the Z mount system. Now I took this bad boy out to Longwood Gardens, which is where I like to go when I'm testing out lenses, especially for landscape or macro purposes. And it's perfect there because there's a ton of flowers, there's a ton of bees to try and photograph as well as getting some landscapey images. Now, just because this is a macro lens doesn't mean it can't be used for portraits or for landscapes or anything else because a lens is a lens is a lens. Now I used it on the Nikon Z7 II right here. Now before anybody asks what firmware did I have on there, we always update to the latest firmware before we take any camera or any lens out into the real world to give it a test and that's exactly what we did here. So at the time of recording this and testing this lens, it was the latest firmware that Nikon had to offer. So now let's take a look at the outside of the lens. Of course, lens hood, always put that on. Funny thing is, I actually took the lens hood off a couple of times when I was trying to get super close to something because the lens hood would start to bump into the subject that I was trying to photograph. We have a 62 millimeter filter thread right here. So that's a 62 millimeter lens cap, 62 millimeter filter thread. The first thing that you notice when you pick up this lens is how light it is. I expected to feel a little bit more substance to it. Now that's not a bad thing. It's nicer to have lighter lenses. The reason I say that is because because the old 105, which is right here, feels a lot more substantial. Now this one right here has the F to Z adapter on it. And for size purposes, let's just go ahead and put it down. Let me put the lens cap back on and boom, you can see they are very similar. Now, is this a fully new redesigned lens? I don't know, I'm pretty sure that it should be because it's for the Z mount system, but it does match up pretty similarly to this one, but it is much lighter. I welcome the lighter lens, but like I said, I was a little surprised at how light it was when I took it out of the box. But on the outside of the lens, we've got the OLED display that is basically uh, something that I don't personally use. I know some people will end up using it. I just think that it's a waste of time and space. You've got your control ring right here, which is closer to the body in this case. Uh, that's another thing that I personally deactivate, but maybe you'd like it for aperture, maybe you'd like it for ISO, that's up to you. I just don't like to accidentally bump it. Over here, we've got the display button, we've got a lock button, we've got the Nikon S right here for the S line. We've got your auto to manual for focus, as well as a focus limiter from full to limit right there. There is no switch on the side here to turn off the VR. You're gonna have to do that inside the camera, but honestly, there's almost no times when you're hand holding this that you would turn off the VR, so keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the weight of this lens. It comes in at 1.4 pounds or 630 grams, which is a quarter pounder of cheese or a quarter pounder with cheese less than the old lens right here. And that also is without the adapter, the weight is given. So the adapter adds like 0.65 of a pound. So keep that in mind. It makes it a little bit heavier. Now in terms of focusing, you've got dual motors uh, for multi-focus going on in here. That means two motors, which should mean faster focusing speeds. Um, and not to upset anybody on Nikon, it, it's really not a very fast focusing lens. It's a super accurate lens. The lens is fantastic, but on the Z7 II, it was just a very slow process. So when I'm trying to, to focus on something and I miss, it would have to hunt all the way forward or all the way back. And that's where the limiter comes in into play. But I will say this, because I also tested out the Canon 102.8 macro just to get a feel for that one in comparison to this. And that was snappy and lightning fast when it came to focus. So again, the focusing system in the Nikon with this lens feels or actually is 
much slower. Now that doesn't mean that it's not accurate, but I did run into issues when trying to focus on a bee on a flower that's moving where it just would not acquire, or if I missed, I'd have to wait for it to move back and move forward. Again, super accurate when you nail it. The colors, the tones, and everything are incredible. In fact, let's start taking a look at some of the images right here. This is just a simple shot of some leaves. Longwood Gardens is fantastic for taking photos. You can bring tripods, you can bring your cameras. They encourage you to come there, but do not step on the mulch, Stephen. Do not step. Stephen got yelled at for, I did the same thing. I stepped on the mulch, not on the flowers because it's mulch. I needed to get closer to the bee and I stepped on the mulch. Stephen got yelled at for that. Get not, off the mulch! It's all right. You can get back on the mulch as soon as she walked away. So here's the shot right here. I, I mean, I love the colors and tones. Again, coming off the Nikon system, it is my favorite color. It's my favorite tones right off the bat. So it's a sweet shot. Now, you might think that this background was super dark. Uh, I mean, it was the water that was dark because it's they have like black painted underneath, but it was super sunny when I took this. But the colors and the smoothness of the stamens or pistols. I mean, I don't remember what the hell they are in flowers. I don't remember fourth grade, but it, it just, the, the, the way that this lens renders the details is incredible. It's smooth, it's sharp, it's nice. I love the feel of the images. I mean, just look at this shot right here. This is a lily pad, one of those massive, massive lily pads. Steven tried to stand on one and he fell right through. He did not, Steven did not do that, but some little kid did. No, some little kid did and it wasn't me. I would, have, I would have tried it, but no, you can't sit on this lily pad. But I love the shallow depth of focus. Now Nikon says you can get within 11.4 inches for your close focus. I found that to be weird, but then when you actually think about it, it's probably taking it from the sensor to the subject that you're shooting. Because I got super close to things, I'm like, I know what 11 inches is, and this certainly isn't 11, this is more like three. How do I know that? Don't ask. But it felt like more like three inches um, that I could get to, but that's why they take it from the sensor to the subject. So. I always, for whatever reason, I always look at it from the end of the lens to something, but that's how they do it right there. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Nikon 105 macro and edited with Fropac 3, starting with fifth element. Boom, it gets super creative right off the bat followed by Canadian Tuxedo. Gives it a really nice look. And then if you wanna get really creative, we got Gotham. And look at what Gotham does to the picture with one click. Then we've got something super contrasty called King Contrast, followed by Mount Airy. If you like light and airy, this is going to be for you. This is what people are doing with weddings and people. They love that soft look. But for me, for landscape images, I love Skittles from Fropac 1. With one click, it's basically perfect for this photo right here. So if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide that they're for you, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to grab Skittles in Fropack 1, you can get the Fropack triple play bundle with Fropack 1, 2, and 3 at a special discounted price. Now, let's get back to the video. In one of the rooms, there was like cacti and other desert faring plants, and I just really loved what I could do with this type of shot right here. Now, I shot this one right here at f11 just to give a little bit more depth, but keep in mind, when you're shooting at 2.8 or f4 or f8, there's not a lot of difference when you are using the macro lenses. The, the shallow depth of field is absolutely insane. In fact, let me jump up to this typewriter shot. Look at this. This is at f4.5, and we got half the A from Dear Nikon in focus. Look at how shallow that is as it runs up the page right there. It's incredible how narrow that is. Now that can come into play, but also if you wanna get everything in focus, you could use the stacking mode inside of this camera. And the stacking mode is so easy to use. You tell it how many pictures you want it to take. You tell it the intervals between each picture. You tell it how far you want it to move the focus between each picture and you just let it fire. And it does it silently with the electronic shutter and it just shoots.
notes, and then you have to stack them in a software. But it is so sharp and so gorgeous when you can do that. Now, I didn't have the patience to go ahead and do all of that. I did test it out to see how you do it. That's how I could reiterate what it is right now. But that is an awesome feature to have inside the camera. So good on Nikon for offering that up. Moving on to this cactus, there were some water droplets on there. Here I'm at F4. Now, sometime with the Nikon lenses, depending on how close you are focusing to a subject, it may not allow you to get to 2.8. It may give you F3 or 3.3 or F4. It depends on how close you get. That's just something that the Nikon lenses have always done. Now, we zoom in here and I love the fact that we have like the magnifying uh, of, of the pores of the cactus right here. The colors are fantastic. I probably started with Skittles on this, our preset, because Skittles is great for stuff like this, and it looks awesome. Um, this one, 3.8. That's what happens. I was set to 2.8, but the camera then goes to 3.8, because the same thing happened with the older Nikon lenses as well. But it's nice, sharp, colorful. I wish I could get a little closer, but you can't get that close with it, like I said earlier, you've got that 11.4 inch close focusing distance. Uh, you could probably pick up one of those 50 millimeter macros that Nikon offers. That would let you get closer, right, Steven? Yeah. Yeah, you could get closer. I saw Ted Forbes did an awesome picture. Was it a penny? Yep. Yeah, we're gonna put that picture up. Ted Forbes did this with the 50 millimeter Nikon. That lets you get much closer. But remember, as you get closer, you're blocking some light. You may have to throw some extra light in there, but that let him get super duper close. I love this. This is narrow. This is at F3.8. Uh, I just love the colors on it. Now, trying to photograph bees out in the meadows was not easy. I do recommend that if you do go to Longwood, the meadows, absolutely fantastic, worthwhile. It's like a two mile round trip walk out to the, the house and then all the way back. It's great. Um, this is where I ran into a little bit of issues. I, I went to F8 to just try to give myself a little bit more depth and I probably took 50 or 60 pictures of bees with only a few being actually good or good enough, and, and this was one of them. But I would love to have gotten a little bit closer. I was fighting with the focus again because it's just slower to acquire. Where Steven was using the Canon R5 with the 102.8 macro from Canon, and he was shooting bees, and it was just acquiring much quicker just because that focus system is more snappy. I'm not sitting here trying to beat up Nikon because it is fully capable of getting great results. I'm just letting you know that if you're in the market to get a system that were, that, that really, when your focus is macro, that you should know that there's differences when it comes to focusing speed. Quality wise, the Nikon is absolutely incredible and I'll continue to say that. The color renditions, the sharpening, everything is super nice and you can get great results. Landscapes, so you have a 100, 105 and it's a macro, but you can get landscapes with it. Don't forget, you can shoot at 105 millimeters and do it. It doesn't always have to be wide. And use these foreground elements like I did here to help create some dimension to draw you in to the subject. Here I was at F3.2 and it just looks fantastic. And the next shot is where I focused on just the weeds or the grass that's growing in the foreground and the depth of field, the background just looks incredible. Now this is Steven's favorite part where we talk about both blades or the aperture blades there are nine nine yep nine rounded blades in here it's supposed to give you a nice looking bokeh in the background you tell me it looks incredible it looks incredible it's amazing now I mean I, I don't care about how many blades it has that's just me personally obviously more is considered to be better in this case it just looks really sweet let me jump in here real quick and say that this video is brought to you by Squarespace if you're looking to build your very own online portfolio use what I've been using for over 10 years for my personal photo website and get your 14 day free trial over at squarespace.com slash Frono's photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code Frono's photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Moving on to another flower shot. Just wanted to see how close we could get to these, these spermicidal thing. What are they called? Pistols, stamens, pollinators. You guys let me know down below, but I was able to focus on these pollinators and uh, yeah. Again, great, sharp. Once you could get your focus locked, um, not even locked, I don't even do focus locking anymore because if you breathe and you move on single focus, it's gonna end up, you're, you're gonna end up missing because of how shallow and narrow the depth of field is. I went to single point. I didn't use pinpoint focus, I used single point, put the point right where I needed it to be, 
waited for the focus to hunt and find what it when, when it finally found and I would take the picture. And just as you move ever so slightly or even breathe, you might move in or out of focus. That's why I take three, four, five shots in a row because you're hoping that you fall into line exactly where you need it to be. Or you could be on a tripod or you could still run into issues on a tripod because the flowers are moving in the wind. So don't forget, it's like dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Anyway, bees. I got lucky, I got two bees. This other bee was flying and it was like, oh snap, there's already a bee on this flower. I better vacate, which they did. Now, I don't think either of these are perfectly sharp anywhere, but I kind of like the picture. Um, yeah, actually it's sharp on the flower, not on the bee. That's not where I was going. I was trying to get the bee in focus, but in this case we'll take it because there were two bees flying. This case, we got one bumblebee bee. Look how yellow his, his stripes are. So we got more of the, the, the wings in focus, less of the bee, but the colors are good. He's on the other side of the flower. And then back here at the studio, I broke out the hundred and some year old, it's probably like 120 year old, uh, no, it's about 110 year old typewriter that we had fixed. And if you haven't seen our typewriter video, I highly recommend you check that out. And the typewriter shots look great. It was a little bit of an exercise to get the focus where I needed it to be. I threw a bunch of light in there. I just want to reiterate that again. But the final images, are great. I keep coming back to that, that the files are great, the images are great. Moving the focusing point right to this O or zero is, is awesome of the hammer. Uh, yeah, that's called a hammer. And they're just super sharp and super nice. Now back to the paper, I showed you that one. Shooting the edge of the paper coming out of the typewriter was awesome. Uh, I just love how sharp the edge is and how nice and macro and the nice details of the cotton paper and the fall off of the shadows. That looks great as well. And then the final image is the one that's flat straight on that says, Dear Nikon. So I'm happy with the results. I mean, if I was buying a lens for the Z system and I needed a macro lens, I'm buying the 105 2.8 all day long. Now, some people may say, would I get the, should I adapt one? Should I get the older one and adapt it? And my answer to that is no. If you can go native, then absolutely go native. It's not that bad at 996.95. The old one is a hundred bucks less than that. But who is this lens for? This is for the professional, and of course the amateur too, but let me start with the professional. If you're a wedding photographer and you have to do rings and details and the dress and all of that, then this is going to be a must have lens to put in the bag. It's one of those that you add after you have a 14 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. It's what I consider to be a specialty lens. If it's something that you need and that you're gonna use often and it's gonna benefit you, then it's absolutely a lens you should have. And if you're a pro, a thousand bucks isn't bad for this lens that's gonna make you a ton of money. If you're an amateur shooting around and you wanna do macro, well, you could look at this, you could look at the less expensive, the 50 millimeter, but that's up to you. I mean, this was a lens that was probably my sixth lens or fifth lens that I added when I bought it used at Allen's camera. I think I would pay like 400 bucks for one of the 105s. I didn't need, need the lens before that, but it was great to have and it gave me another arsenal in my bag to get the job done. But now it's time for the sniff test and the wind tunnel test. Steven, which first, sniff or wind? Now sniff. Okay, let's sniff it. Pussy willow. That's right, it smells like the pussy willows at Longwood Gardens. All right, wind tunnel test time. I'm scared for the wind tunnel test, Steven, because this one's super light. It stands tall, it stood its ground, and it passes the wind tunnel test. Hey, don't forget that you can download sample images over on the website. I always put up the raw files. Uh, they're gonna be blanked out, so there will be no edits to them, but you have the raw file to tweak, to see what you think, to see how it is, to pixel peep, to decide if this lens is for you. Again, let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this video. Give it a thumbs up. Just please give it a thumbs up if you got this far. Let me know. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared, Polenfronosphoto.com. See ya.